do it. Like it was crazy. So yeah, I got to do that. And like, that's back when I met like, uh, like Covenel and, and Husky and, uh, like Kyle Mask. And the OGs. Fireburner. Yeah. Fireburner was like a huge, a huge factor into like coaching people early on. Uh, talking like O'Neill and like Lars. Oh, you and, were bringing back so many memories uh, for me. Deboyer, yeah, names I haven't heard in a long time. Yeah, DeBoer, <laughs> like a bunch, of, yeah, a bunch of the OGs. Yeah, it was... Uh, Husky. That's back when I used to be like somewhat okay at the game. And then it dropped off very quickly. That was so. pre-Santa hat. Right? Yeah, yeah. Pre, uh, pre-December 20, <laughs> pre 2015, yeah. So... Yeah, if you guys know Lawler, big fan of the Santa hat. He's known for having that on his car when we play. Um, so our second question, Lawler, is of all the events you've been to, um, which one has been your favorite, and why was it babysitting me in Sweden? <laughs> that, that in itself is a story. Um, yes. Shout out to Waypoint for taking the last <laughs> That's a huge train. story. Scumbag train. <laughs> yeah. No, um... Probably season one. Like a lot of people obviously talk about like season five and the moment and all that kind of stuff. But season one was was such a cool feeling because even as someone who wasn't like super involved with the pro scene at that time, like obviously it was we casted our first season and we we're getting to know everybody, but it was so cool. You would see people like Cookstar and Marky meet for the first time, even though they'd known each other for eight years and stuff like that. Like a lot of those very special moments the first time and kind of seeing all of the like hard work that everybody not just like the production team and the broadcast crew but also the players being rewarded uh like a $55,000 prize pool it was at a nightclub we were all flying to LA which <laughs> for a lot of people that play games like traveling is not something like most people are kind of just stuck to their own area so it was a really cool time to just see everybody come together even though looking back at it now how scuffed season one was like it was in a nightclub so they would like spend all day setting up the land PCs so you guys could scrim one game and then they would have to take down those same PCs <laughs> so they could run the nightclub at night. Like it was, yeah, there, it was there awful. Enough PCs I was not there. Everybody. I didn't know this. Yeah. You got yeah. like two scrims going on at once and all the other teams are just watching. Really? Yeah, it was, Dang. it was a thing. I... Um, I think we, like we all signed a PC for somebody. I forget who that was for. Oh, I remember that. Yeah. That was for yeah, James yeah. Bot. I think he, he showed a gold rush, right? Didn't he once or no? No, we, um, in the very first season, I think it might have been for Psyonix or maybe it was Cloud Fuel or something like that, but I do know we oh, all signed Cloud, a flag yeah. for Cloud Fuel and gave it to him on stage. We did a lot of stuff like that. Um, yeah, it was, it was just like super wholesome vibes. I remember basically babysitting Cookser because Cookser back then didn't talk. Like he would not speak to anybody unless your name was Mike Rules. It's the only person he would talk to. So I basically had to go up to him and be like, treat him like a little child and be like, do you want candy? And he'd be like, <laughs> <laughs> and then you would like take him to the place that he needed it and like i remember uh turtle almost getting pooped on by a bird while we were doing interviews like it's a good wholesome time. days man wholesome times way back then but yeah it was it's come a really long way but yeah season one is definitely the special one for sure um and i don't think prudential center season seven gets enough love either Prudential center and season seven was a really good really good land yeah prudential center was a good one um definitely i like cucks a lot having i got some cool time to meet Cucks because uh, Mystic and him were on the same team, my boyfriend, right. and uh, I get to spend a lot of time with him and his girlfriend. He's an awesome guy. Different. Yeah, he he, he's very quiet, but he's different outside of Broccoli. He's a little yeah. bit more chill out, chilled out and relaxed. It's a, like, uh, Quinn Lobdell doesn't get enough credit for breaking Cooks out of his shell. When they did the original Gold Rush at, uh, at J uh, James Bot's house, uh, of course, Cooks are missed his flight, so he had to stay a little bit longer. And That's because of that, like... Cucks. <laughs> him and him and Quim, him and Quim hung out a lot, and it actually got Cooks to like get out of his shell because he didn't have a choice. When you're around Quinn, like you have to talk, like you yeah. are forced to be a person. So uh, Cooks are yep. like a lot of it was actually because of Quinn, like spending that one on one time and like breaking him out of his shell. And ever since then, like it was always a privilege because he was one of Savants. Like I remember sitting down with even Kronovi, like what was it, E League 2018, like behind the scenes watching Weedem Girls make that run, talking about like. Yeah. You know, hey, if Remco moves up just like Torment does as a third man, like this team's gonna win it. And, like just having those kind of conversations <laughs> that you're being able to have like that like as a caster, obviously, like you try to, you know, tout that you know what you're talking about. But Cookster was always that guy when you got to sit and talk to him, like you would say something and then like look for his reaction and be like that. And then he would like nod and give you approval and you're like, Yes, okay. <laughs> like you get it right. So like he was just one of those guys that thought so differently about the game down to like hundreds of a decimal for like his dll files to adjust his game settings and like crazy stuff that nobody else did but yeah cooks are a special breed and he's just a he's a sweet guy too he's so nice 
Is he's he? Sam, striker. did you feel like you had like the hardest time playing against him early on? Because I feel like it was you and Cuck Sears pretty much. Like, um, the discussion he was, of who's the best. <laughs> he was definitely a lot of competition because we went all the way back to uh, Sarp days. I, I would play him back in the old game. Um, him, him, Mike. Uh, Mike and Cucks were the two big like EU people that I had a really hard time beating in 1v1 back then. Um, so I really enjoyed competing against him. And I don't know, he's he was just always so unique. I think that's why it was so difficult. I mean, you watch Cucks free train and it's just so different than anybody <laughs> else's practice. You're like, what are you even practicing? And he's like, well, there's this theory I have. And I'm like, I'm already lost. Like, I, you are. <laughs> they come up with the pinch, though, you know? True. Yeah, exactly. Like, it's literally how he spent free play. Like, you'd yeah, be behind him in scrims man. and he'd just be cooks or pinching. That's all he would be doing. Um, yeah, yeah, I don't he's... know. He was, he was definitely an out of the box thinker, but like, I remember the OG days, like, the only two streams you would ever watch. If you wanted, like, actual interactive, you'd watch Crow, he would teach you things. If you wanted to just be amazed, you would tune into that Dominus with the skull decal. Yeah. Was orange. No mic. Nothing. No mic, just, just <laughs> gameplay. And you would just watch it passively, like, you throw it up on your second monitor while you're doing something else and just always tune in. And we don't really have streamers yeah. like that anymore. Like, the only one I can think of is, like, Late Night Dapper every once in a while, where he just vibe to music, and you just watch him, like, out mechanic <clears> people. But other than that, you don't really get, like, passive watching streams anymore. Um, yeah. Sometimes like, late yeah. at night, like, bubble players will mute themselves yeah. and stream and stuff. But not, like, number one in the world, muted, going no. ham for hours, oh. like Cux was. And it was yeah. hours. You know? I, I wonder who broke him out of his shell on Twitter, you know, because he's been a lot more active <laughs> lately, like yeah. shutting down some takes from other people or providing takes of his own. And he, he never used to do that. This is like a in the past year thing. So whoever got him tweeting more, you know, kudos to Shout you. Shout out to that guy. I, yeah. more I still tweets, think it's yeah. Quinn, man. I still think it's Quinn. I think Quinn was the one that initially got him to like start speaking up a bit. So maybe, uh, well, Cox, maybe if you're listening, was. you need to come out of your shell more, bro. We love you. You got we some do. good words. I would love like uh, it, there would be there would make me nothing happier to see him being the one like giving out the medals at Worlds. Oh, that'd be sick. Yeah, yeah I would love that. Um, and speaking of medals and World Championships, I'm gonna transition our third question, Lawler. Is um, given the fact that Rocket League has become a truly global esport with the performance of minor regions this season, do you think that changes how we're viewed within the industry? I think so. Um, I think it's really important. Like, Rocket League in itself, I, th I still feel is a little underappreciated. Um, you don't really see it talked about in the in the major conversations. And we're trying, like, I do panelist work for the eSports Awards. And the last time we did it, like, Rocket League took second. Uh, run up to League, because nobody beats League in eSports nowadays. So yeah, it's starting to get that recognition. It's just difficult, because all the, all the efforts that are being put forth by the Rocket League eSports team are kind of diminished due to the fact that COVID means we can't do in-person events and stuff like that. So... The first time in essentially almost three years, we are able to run a tournament structure that we've been trying to accomplish. And I say we as a community, but um, the Rocket League Esports staff is finally able to showcase what the season is truly supposed to be between, you know, all the regionals going into majors, majors then going into, like, you're getting a circuit-based system for the first time. So I think they're going to learn a lot from this. And then when it comes to the 22-23 seasons, they're still going to do some refinement. We're not going to have eight lives every tournament, even though we have three regionals and you know, kind of streamline the process so we all don't get burnt out and there's gonna be a lot of like small nuances that i think they really improve um but i remember last world championship that we had and you saw like different pro players like uh pengu from g2 and stuff like that from other esports being like wow rocket league's actually hype and when you get that yep. like <laughs> global conversation around it i think it really just puts it on that roadmap so yeah without a doubt i think um not only seeing that minor regions have a chance to and the improvement that we've had in just one season right like this is the first time in five years that APAC, Mina, even OCE and Sam get dedicated tournaments with the same format. Mm -hmm. Still not the same prize pool, which kind of sucks, but um, marketing reasons and budget and all that kind of stuff, whatever. But um, you're seeing like even in Detonator, like I'm a huge fan of that team. Just from the difference, even without going to the spring major, between the winter major and then playing in Gamers 8, they look like a completely different team. Like their, their rotations are so surefire, like they're super consistent, they play like a clean game of Rocket League when in the past would be like, oh, there's a whiff. Oh, they're double committing. Oh, and it's like, it's been four months and you're seeing that improvement. So yeah, I think yeah, it's, the, it's awesome the, to see that from from every region. Yeah, the majors in general have been huge for teams. Yeah. Um, and I think that, I don't know if you've seen Cam, but it seems to be paying dividends the, the longer we go on, right? So you had the yeah. Fury Explosion. 
Pioneer's last winter split as you're on. So. Yeah, Rocket League really lives and dies by how many land events they can have. The players benefit the most when they get to get the best practice True. possible at, at these big events. And so I'm just really glad that, you know, we get to do this this long circuit format. We get to have more of these events. I really hope the off season, looking you know beyond the World Championship, has like dream hacks come back, maybe something like that. It's really really important for these teams. Um, but speaking of events and brackets and everything, Lawler, I have a very direct question, more like a prediction for yeah. you. Who's more likely to be eliminated um, in Swiss this week? Is it? Gonna Ooh. be Dig, Carmine, or Semper. And my bias Ooh. is clear that I think you may not be doing so well. But out of those <laughs> three. Yeah. Top three, yeah. I mean, I'll let Lawler think and I'll jump in. So go ahead. I've, I've and got my answer. I'm but... gonna say I'm, I think I'm gonna say Semper. Um there were news there was news this week that came out on Twitter from the founder of Shift, Achilles, just saying how Semper is gonna be out of Rocket League this season. Assuming that's true, because usually Shift have the deets. I think that that plays a factor into how the players are coming in, knowing that they don't have the org support. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I know from when I was playing, when the org was having issues, it affected the team. Um, like talking about trading us, selling us, stuff like this that we would have meetings for. It added stress onto the team and right. affected our RLCS performance. So. Since that affected me, I'm going to go with Semper since I saw that news. I love Cassio and the Semper team, but that's my pick. So the the difficulty is, like, playstyle-wise, Semper does have a lot of struggles. Like, they, they feel very chaotic. Like, there's an assemblance of, like, consistency in their play. But they do also have the pop-off. And as much as I don't put as wet... Like, I don't put a lot of weight into Gamers 8 just because, like, every other game was a palate cleanser. Like, it's hard to get into, like, a groove when... You're playing threes and all of a sudden he's like, okay, one's now. You sit for five minutes. And you're like, okay, just <laughs> yeah. kidding. We're back to three. Like, it doesn't really, like, there's some things to take. And they did look pretty <laughs> solid in threes. Um, I think the longer time they are together, like, Semper's been a sinking ship for, for a while now. Like, it was January 2021. They when were RG losing left. what? They lost $1.46 million in revenue this year. Like, we've kind of known that. Really? They were said happening. that? Yeah, the, the reports Ooh, came out. Man. They're down $1.46 million bad. on an initial valuation of like $3.1 million. Um, so yeah, they, they That's have bad. been there. Rams oh, also left a while ago. So like, this is nothing new. Uh, but I do think Semper's got some pretty exciting stuff, um, that they can pull together. Like exotic has been a good addition for that team. Um, I've yes. also heard some things internally with Dignitas and. Yeah. I, I don't I'm know nervous. if I'm worried for, for I'm, Dig or I'm, Semper I'm here. I'm very nervous for Dig. I, I think they either go 9-0 and just crush it because like, even in the scrims that I've been watching with them, which I don't put too much value in scrims, but like. They're playing a more simple game because they're helping a lot with like making their game more focused on like pass centric and then using the mechanics to make up for things like the simplicity of Dignitas and their approach is good. But I think internally there is some big things going on with that team, which I can will you be say very surprised or elaborate? Uh, no, uh, okay. <laughs> I will be I will be surprised to see if that team sticks together at the end of this season. That's all I'm going to say. I think um yeah, I think, Crow, don't you think that that's kind of assumed at this point with, like, how many bad results in a row that Dig has seemed to put up? Yeah, I mean, uh, some of the teams here at the World Championship, and I think this is very true for a lot of the... Uh, some of the NA teams, a lot of the EU teams, they're, a lot of their results are near the beginning of the season. These results were front-loaded, and they managed to coast into the World Championship off of really, really strong performances in fall and a little bit in winter. So their their perceived strength, I think, is a lot lower, but the ability to peak is is there. Um, I do think Dignitas are a team that they need to either do really well or they're going to crumble. So if they, if they start off strong, they could hold that momentum um, for a very long time in the tournament. But I don't know. I don't know. I think the, the one team we didn't talk about was Carmine, and I think that's Kick because they actually look great right now. Yeah, Kick they're, they're the team that's Kick got the, the recent um, I think Nolly results. helps them a lot. Yeah, That that team is uh, ready to keep proving people wrong. There's a lot of motivation behind that team. Yeah. Um, I, I think Nolly and, uh, yeah. and Itachi Astral. are okay with Astral like just doing whatever he wants, which is really important. Because as a yeah, player, to... personally, like like someone playing with Astral is hot, tough. You have to be okay with him being on the ball like seventy five percent of the time, and you being on the ball like fifty. 
It's not even that. The so I got I got to do their press conference. Um, I've been working press for Psionics now, uh, doing stuff like on my own personal stuff where they're allowing us to sit in the post game interviews and all that kind of stuff. And we got mm -hmm. to sit and I asked them about that and and talking about like what's the feeling going through like reverse sweeps and all that kind of stuff because you were both on receiving end and opposite. And a lot of people give Astro a really hard time because they see him as this guy who tilts and doesn't have any emotion and like all this frustration. But the crazy thing about it is while talking with them about it, Astro, when he's in that big moment or when he's under a lot of pressure, or when he needs to step up, he will say, I need to be like in my own bubble. I need to just do my own thing. So he'll sit there and he will just isolate himself. He won't communicate. He won't do all that kind of stuff. But his two teammates, like you stated, are okay with that. Like Nali and Itachi are well aware that that is the way he's going to be. He's notorious for the like, after the uh, the Vitality Dignitas, where he's like, calm down, calm down. After this big hype moment, this OT thing. But that's him just trying to make sure he stays level. He doesn't want his endorphins to go too high or too low. He wants to stay even keel the whole time. So the fact that Nali and Itachi are willing to support that and let him do his own thing and that, that it's been communicated, mm -hmm. I don't think you're going to see this overblown like, Oh, hey, he's angry. He's upset. He's tilted. Whatever. He like, no, he's just doing his own thing. He's 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 playing really dang well. Like he looked great. Yeah, like he best I've seen in a while from Astral. And, and then that's supported with both Itachi and Nali, who are extremely capable as well. So I think yeah. I was a little bit nervous when I saw that team formulate based upon what we've heard with like personalities and all that kind of stuff. But they are extremely motivated to prove a lot of people wrong, and they've got a heck of a fan base behind them to do it. So. Yeah, there's there's a lot of cool things about that team that we don't get to see the like inner dynamics or the way that they communicate or don't communicate for this matter at times. But um, it's been successful. They they look very solid. They're almost like a surefire to make it into into groups without a doubt. Absolutely. Yeah. They, I say they're that now they're gonna go of... three and they're gonna get yeah. eliminated. But like we're just, that's just how it goes. We, we exist to curse all all the teams, you know. <laughs> yeah. And the mo the moment you want to root for somebody, they're like, oh yeah, I'm just gonna lose now. But yep. <laughs> speaking of of success, um. I actually wanted to ask you, Lawler, um, about your transition from the RLCS desk to, you know, YouTube and Twitch and all this other coverage, because you've really been making a name for yourself. And, you know, what, what are the secrets? How, how did you do it? Because now <laughs> you, you, you're really getting to cover a lot of stuff. And um, you're like a staple in the scene for a lot of news for people for Rocket League Esports. Yeah, I think um, after the RLCS uh, leave, it was kind of that motivator of, I never want to go back to a 9-to-5. I don't want to work at a desk job. I don't want to, so like, what do I have to do in order to get there? And luckily, I had, I'm a good little saver, so I had enough of a nest egg to where I could go and experiment. So I uh, started doing like daily content and custom maps with like Lethmere and John Sandman and stuff. And luckily with, you know, the people I've met and talked with, um, I've been able to kind of dabble in a bunch of different things and try and experiment a bunch of different things. Um, and the thing that after you start putting out stuff, even if it's good or bad, you can kind of reflect on it and be like, oh, this is the stuff that actually is being reacted to, which was news coverage, like this week in Rocket League videos, like what's going on around the scene. Because people want to hear like, hey, you're a former analyst. We want to hear your thoughts on the game. That's what we know you for. So I kind of leaned into it and eventually it ended up becoming what it is now. Um, Alongside that then is just the matter of putting myself out there. Also, massive thank you to my agency with CSA, Character Select Agency. Shout um, out, Andrew. Woo. Yeah, Andrew, Kurt, and all of them put a lot of effort into making sure that, you know, their broadcast talent. And I'm lucky that I had, you know, a lot of AAA talent supporting me when the announcement was made of like, yeah, you, like you'll be fine. And people sticking their neck out. So um, I've casted 15 different titles in the last two years. Wow. Um, anywhere from like Diablo 2 that. remastered with Twitch Rivals to Among Us and like and obviously you guys know I <laughs> the I Among do stuff Us with, phase. Yeah, with V1 and everything else like I, you know, I I do significantly better now than I did when I was with RLCS candidly. So um and a lot of that is just by working hard and keeping head down and and putting yourself out there. I've hosted two TV shows, one of my own on Canadian television like I've done a lot of cool things, but a lot of that is just not being afraid to try something new and also like putting those challenges in front of myself. So um, I haven't missed a daily video upload since like February or March of 2020. On the I'm tired. I'll flex huh. for you, Lawler. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of tired. I could, I could go for a nap or two or <laughs> like a, a short coma probably. But yeah, I don't know. It's that's just kind of how it goes. Like I, I told myself when I got into esports, nobody's going to outwork me. Like I'll, I'll make sure that if something happens it's due to a different circumstance not due to my work ethic so um working hard and because of that work ethic it's it's you know 
created a platform or a fan base or whatever it may be to to set an expectation and now it's like how do i continue to innovate that right like now i'm at the point where i'm putting out like high produced docuseries content like that's the next focus like uh we just put out like the heavy like car bug and like the placebos yeah of we what saw that <laughs> and putting out that video and it's like that was a, a big project and how did it do and it's like okay like it was that affirmation of like you have to try something like that to see how it works and then learn from it and then make the next one so i'm really excited for the next one uh, i've got another big like documentary series that's coming out uh, about a certain pro that i think has a story that needs to be told that hasn't been told yet so um we just recorded like a two-hour interview with them and i'm ready to splice it down and and uh, release that to everybody so yeah that's just awesome. trying to Look trying to innovate to and stick with it and work hard and uh lucky to to cast and do stuff as well on top of it so yeah yeah be yeah. sure guys to check out lawler's youtube channel you just type in lawler um rl on youtube you'll find it there and uh, he does great stuff there but um, we were gonna do the ten questions, but we've gone on a bit of a tangent. So we're gonna we're gonna slide down to uh, where is Turbo? And before I throw it to Cam, uh, from what I know, he's in Sweden trying to get his visa reapproved and come back to Worlds. So Cam, I'm gonna ask you, uh, where's Turbo? <laughs> yeah, I, I believe Turbo had a. Um, I think he mentioned something online about EU ranked being super toxic or whatever. And he just wants to be back in NA. Um, he's sick of being over there. But my question about where's Turbo relates a lot to the wild card for um, this week and Optic in particular because I don't know what's going on with that roster. I mean, they they've done well recently without Turbo, but. Are they going to play him? Are they not going to play him? Turbo's not their not their coach. He's a good player. And He's listed as a coach, to be fair, on the website. Yeah, but so I don't. I don't he gets know. A free trip. Yeah, true. <laughs> it's true. I just with, with Turbo having played, you know, for them, he basically subbed in when Illusion got sick and qualified them for um, Landon. So he, yep. I, it seems like, from my perspective, Turbo still wants to be a player. It's just Optic has four good players and they're not sure who to field. It's almost like this very strange four-man roster where Turbo is kind of just stuck on the outside looking in. And So what's your take, Cam? My take is that this is incredibly damaging to Turbo's career and potential going into finding a team next season. Um, I think he's just been stuck on hold and he's being held hostage. He doesn't get to play at the World Championship that he qualified for. Yeah, free Turbo! I, I, I really think we should be starting a free turbo hashtag because, I mean, when he was on Envy, I mean, oh, that, that roster is just so iconic. Back when it was Turbo, Atomic, and Mist, I mean, there, there was no doubt that the Turbo machine. was an incredible player. Exactly. The Turbo was so integral to that roster. And now he's just sitting on the sidelines now that the World Championship has come around. I mean, to miss an opportunity like that, I'd be, I'd be frustrated if I was Turbo, not getting to play at the World Championship. I mean, and he was the one who got them there, right? Technically, through the spring series, even though the the, the matchups that he got weren't, you know, uh, like really tough. I feel like Envy on a good day most of the time would be favorite or favorites in those matches, so it wasn't too big of a hill for them to climb. However, he did participate that weekend, which qualified them for that. So, well, what do, you, do you have any thoughts on Turbo? Do you think that he should, you know, be flying in from Sweden expecting to play? This is the World Championship we're talking about. Turbo's not going to play at Worlds. Um, and it'd Straight be, up. It, it would be a disrespectful thing to do in regards to mysteries and illusion. Um, they decided and made that decision to bench Turbo uh, for a reason. They needed to make a change. Things were not working. And while it all stems from the fact that they let go of Atomic, not that they had a choice and they got Dries, um, you are trying to fix a damaged roster in the first place. Like, this is not an ideal situation for Optic, former Envy. Like, it is it is a situation that's not ideal, and, and they're kind of left without it. Um, the difficulty, though, is, like, as much as I love Turbo and want him to play, I don't think this is the roster for it, um, even though he has been a longstanding member with Optic slash Envy. Um, Yes, he filled in when Dries wasn't able to make it in time and he was practicing and scrimming, but they still, despite that, chose to field their starting roster with Dries. They mm -hmm. also still, at the Spring Major, performed and got top eight. Absolutely, like, yeah. That's without Turbo playing. That's not to diminish Turbo. In my opinion, what's probably going to happen is Turbo is going to either, if possible, 
find a way to stay in the States because he's stated he likes being in the States and uh, earning the money that United States organizations provide. Um, but if that it's doesn't happen, factor. I wouldn't be surprised if he ends up going back home and staying in Sweden and trying to find a European team and making a different run. But I do agree with Cam 100%. It, it definitely diminishes his ability to find a team. Like this, him sitting on the sidelines, luckily it's nowadays more about who you know uh, than ever before. Like getting a tryout, yep. getting that kind of opportunity to, to even see if you're capable of being on a roster comes down to who you know. And luckily, everybody knows who the four-time world champ is. So exactly. I, I think he's going to get some tryouts either way. It's just a matter of if he can find a way to sustain his visa, be in the States and try out for teams there, or if it ends up meaning moving back home and then doing it in Europe. So, uh, What gives you the best chance to win, though? Does Turbo give Envy the best chance to win the entire thing? Having him start. Whether or not it's fair. World's it magic, is, you know? I mean, he's the, yeah. the, the storyline states, yes, you have Turbo play. He's a super sub. He wins you a world championship. Yeah, we get that. But at the same time, you've been but practicing and playing with... Is that real with, reality? You've been playing with three players consistently for the past three months. Why would you sub in a different player? Just because it's Turbo and he's got the experience, like, I don't know. I think it diminishes yeah, I, everything you have tried to build as a roster. Like, I just think it it's counterintuitive to everything you're doing. Yeah, I think... It coming out that Turbo's in Sweden kind of really affects my decision making. Like the fact that he wasn't there and they weren't trying out different lineups, you know, like really trying to make it work. If they were just like, if they had this idea and this mindset, which I'd be pretty disappointed by, you know, oh, well, we're just going to bench Turbo and we're not going to try anything else out. This is the three that we have and we're just going to run it and see what happens. I would be kind of disappointed if I were an Envy fan because I want, you know, I want Turbo or Envy to be in the best situation they can to win. And for me, that's Turbo playing. And I understand if I were Dree's Optic, uh, Dree's Illusion or um, Mist. Mist on Optic, I would be upset and frustrated by the time that, you know, Turbo comes in, takes my spot that I've been working for all year. But at the same time, there is some of that magic um, we talked about it last time. We equated him kind of to Tom Brady or Aaron Rodgers for, for you, Lawler, because uh, I know you your know feelings on fun. Tom. So, uh, like, having that type of player with that winning percentage, with that history and that resume does change things and it can add things in special moments. And I think that that shouldn't have been overlooked by the Optic roster. Um, maybe it was forced to be that way because of the visa situation. I'm not sure. But I would like to think that if Turbo were in the U.S., it should have been considered just because of the resume and uh, the storylines. And, you know, that type of factor on a team can, can be a big change. He was the go to Lamb, and I, I do agree with that. But, I mean, they got better placement than they ever did without him. Yeah, their best placement so far. Right. And, yeah. obviously, last, last land was, like, full of surprises and stuff. And who knows how it went with Turbo, but... I look at that roster, and as much as I want Turbo to play, and I love seeing him on land and what he can do and what his name brings to the table and yeah. all the things that he has, I just, I personally don't feel good about it if you were to just put in a player or a last second that you haven't been actively practicing. And maybe they have behind the scenes, we don't know, but um, primarily for Optic, like, you got to stick with what you got. You got to trust the guys that you have, whether it's good or bad. And, like, candidly to both of you, like, I ask you this question. Okay, they play with Mystery's Illusion. What's the best they're placing? That was literally what head. I was just going to ask you right? both. Like, what's the, what's <laughs> the best you think Optic's going to go? Because everybody expected them to go 0-2 yeah. in spring, and they got three rounds past that. If I put in Turbo, do you really feel it's going to make that much more of a difference in the results of how they place? Personally, I don't. I think it does become a factor the longer you stay around. Um, and I also think having a stable, consistent player at LAN, like Turbo's playstyle, is... Something that I haven't been proven wrong as that being a bad thing. So, like, how do I explain this? Uh, like, recently the game has become more mechanical. So, the reasoning that Turbo has slid down in terms of impact is because he's more of a positional, consistent, rotational player. But I think on land, that changes things because of nerves, crowd being a factor... Um, all these things come into play when you're at the desk at land playing. And that passive, I don't want to say passive, but that controlled, more grounded rotational play style, I think actually has a huge impact because it keeps everything from, from getting insane, usually. 
so I would have liked to see that at work in this current format and this current day in RLCS, like mechanical age, because I want to see if it still has a factor because I don't feel like many players currently at worlds have that factor other than NRG and maybe V1 a little bit with torment. Um, and I think that speaking to that in terms of like the V1 side, I think torment in particular is very similar to a turbo play style. I do think Turbo's better at it overall and more consistent at it. He's a better shooter than Tormund is. Um, I think he obviously he has more winning than what Tormund. is this blasphemy what? you are speaking right what? now? What you don't think you Turbo's a better that? shooter than Tormund? Are you kidding? Not at all. Oh, top right, Tommy. Hello. Hello? You guys are ice, tripping. Ice you guys are veins? tripping every no single way. time. Turbo needs to score, he scores. That's why he's and won then he so like many rolls times. it in and accidentally flips the it wrong way. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It literally has a it turbo flick, in. and you're giving. What is this disrespect to Tormi? It goes in. What is wrong with you? No, I love Tormi. He was one teammate. I think he's fantastic. And Slammer. I think I that he's a it. great shooter, and he could be a world champion in a few weeks. I'm not going to lie. Do I, turbo, the stats? do I need to message you? Yeah, let, 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 let's, let's go to other let's go than to Rise. Don't right the stats and like tell you other how wrong than you are Rise, in Turbo is the most historic clutch shooter of all time. Other so than so historic, Rise. he's not even starting on a roster right now. He's beautiful. He's, he's historic clutch yeah, but I'm goal saying if scorer, he played, not shooter. Why, where would they play with Turbo? He's a great shooter, and he puts it in when he needs to. Straight I'm up. I'm just saying you can't tell me that after what we all witnessed in Spring with Torment. You cannot tell me that. I'm was, saying it. I'm saying Torment, it right Torment now. Had Turbo an historically is a better shooter than Torment. You're out of your mind. How yeah. and, 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 I and how, can, with that. and how can you say it historically? Like we're talking about right now, not season four, five, and six. We're talking right now. Okay, a starting right now. Roster. Torment is arguably one of the most consistent players on both offense and defense. And even though his offense yeah, is I'm the most... I'm talking historically, not now. I mean, why, would you the season why do you care? Worlds, why do you Torment care was a better past? shooter than Turbo. That's why they won. Yeah. That's why they won worlds. You're out of your mind, Karma. You I, I don't think so. I think I think that Torment was on one of the best teams possible on an up and coming roster, much like Moist is right now. And Torment has been given more space to have those shots. I think Turbo, his his playstyle puts him in spots to shoot better and have more opportunities than Torment's does, and that's just how it is. And oh, he has you. scored them. And Karma, he has I'm giving you them homework. more times. I'm giving you homework. Has. When you get the chance, go back at all the major matches, like all the big moments that V1 needs to win to qualify for a next moment, and go watch specifically Torment's perspective. The amount of times you will see a shot near post, upper nine, every single time. The ability to okay. like extend a play. Like, How many world championships so does Torment have? Oh my God. What does that have to do with Apples actually oranges, playing right now? What does it have yeah. to do with the world championship this year? I'm not talking about right now. I said historically. If Turbo But if you're to talking play, about slotting I'm... a player into a spot to compete in the world championship in 2021-2022 yes. season... Over the MVP, over the Optic players, not over the V1 players. You're crazy. No, I think, I, I, think, crazy. I think Turbo's historically the most plus shooter other than Rice. A big and difference... if there were a shot to win worlds, I would pick Turbo to shoot it over Tournament. A big difference between the two of them, though, right now, is that Turbo will not get the chance to prove you correct at That's Worlds. <laughs> and Torment, Torment will get the chance Torment to prove will. me and Lawler correct, unfortunately, as as, as it seems with as, everything as going on right now. Critical of, like, I watch V1 more than literally anybody else, like because uh, I have to, and because they're actually super entertaining to watch. It hurts your heart a little bit at times, but like seeing the evolution of that team, without Torment, they do not get where they are right now. Like, as critical as I am about, you know, yes, he's improving his offense, and I'm, I'm still critical of, like, in the big moments when I need him to hit a flip reset, the pace at which Common Beast Mode do it is a little bit different than Torment. Nothing against him. The guy's been competing for this literally isn't a, ever. This isn't criticism towards Torment. But Don't no, mistake Tor it. Torment is a god. But, like, yeah, the consistency I didn't without say him. He wasn't. In Spring Major, without him, they do not make it top three. Like, Agree. Direct brought up a stat, and this blows my mind. V1 averaged 5.52 shots a game. If you look at all the course of Rocket League history, for teams that average less than six shots a game, they at best place top two or a bottom two. Like they go either last or second to last in every if single match. If you don't have six shots. If you don't have yeah, six shots a game, offense. except for one, which was a team in South America and like RLCSX. If you go to the actual stat of 5.52 or less, it has literally never happened. 
Ever. And V1 is sitting at 5.52, you said? At the spring major, they averaged 5.52 shots per game. And every other history historical evidence of that, which is like 217 games, the best that a team has performed is bottom two. V1 did it top three and against the best competition in the world. And a big reason for that is Torment's ability to be like super, super efficient and his defense to keep them in it. So to, to give me this slander of like... This is not yo, slander. Oh, it's How slander. is this turning into How slander? Dare gotten personal. How dare you not me put the Me calling Turbo a clutch Torment. shooter of all time, other than Rise, is the most clutch shooter of all time. Is slander towards Torment? I get it's of, of all time. I get it's of all time. Like, yes, Turbo has done a lot of important things. Like when he got brought into the Envy roster the first time that they had ever, ever won anything was in the brawl. I would know because it's my tournament. But like... I understand like in the grand scheme of the conversation, but like, aren't we trying to talk about world championships? We're trying to talk about like this moment and what it means and to not put that respect on torment, what he does, what he is currently doing. I just, but you're miss you're, you're misunderstanding me right now. I would take torment over turbo. It's not a question. I think torment Good. in form is incredible. And I think that he's a better player than turbo right now. I'm talking about historically. I thought Turbo was a better shooter. I, I think you got to go behind season six. Once season six torment was like in that final against Turbo. I mean, you were his teammate. You so saw good. how clutch he was. Yeah, but I think he's clutch. I would have him at like three, four, five, maybe. I would not. I wouldn't put him above Turbo. I don't know why that's like outlandish. All right. Because I think you... torment would agree that with <sighs> Turbo's pedigree and championships, that me putting him slightly above torment is on par but i mean right now i going back to your conversation i think torment is the backbone of v1 and a huge piece of why they win um i think that he's an incredible player he's one of the most underrated players in na's history going all the way back he's been playing since season one it's incredibly difficult as someone who's been around since season one as crow and i can attest torment mm -hmm. is still out there playing we're right here talking about it so the amount of respect, don't get it confused. My respect for Torment is very, very high. But if we're talking yeah. about pure shooting, that's where the conversation kind of changes because I think I mean, Torment adds a lot to the team. I don't know why we're talking about Torment. Torment. We should talk about like... Uh, you guys are talking about Torment. We should be talking about Beast Mode if we're talking pure shooting. That's what we should be talking about. I mean, if yeah, we're talking historically, there's other people that definitely come to mind like KDOP rather than... Turbo or yeah, otherwise. That's true. And I, I you also talk about like the roles, K the roles that both Torment and Turbo fulfill. I can understand why you're making the comparison to that like generic like third man role, even though it's evolved. So it's much the can, that. it's the role I played for a little bit. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I had at, to transition to, which sucked, by the way. Like I look at the icon of of what Torment did in season six, like when he won MVP, oh. ice in the veins, god tier shooting, like golden striker awards, like across the board, like. But then you can make those same arguments towards like, like Fireburner. Fireburner for energy for a long time was their best striker because all he did was wait for the, the garbage goals and then would slam those in every single time. But a lot of the credit, I don't think, is then given to the people who set those things up. It's the reason why Rizzo never gets any credit, despite him being easily the best disruptor in, like, North America for a long time. Like, the amount of stuff he set up, I mean, bro, you can t attest to it. Like, Oh, yeah, and he was man's basically a the inspiration like, for how bump-heavy everybody is now, yeah. right? They're like, all just, like, be the evolution of Rizzo. Yeah, I, I just I don't want this to be understood or misconstrued as. Oh, we're doing it. We're twisting the narrative. Absolutely. Because Torment was <laughs> my teammate. I already clipped this and put it on Twitter like five minutes ago. He's one of the longest people I've ever known. <laughs> Out of had. context. My respect for him is immense, and I always will cheer for him. And it's why I'm picking V1 of Worlds. Just have to throw that out there. Uh, well, not good to that know they're not Waller... winning now. Thanks for the jinx. Appreciate that. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> well, I I, I was going to ask you, Lawler, where do you see this team going? Because for me, this wild card... For me, Rocket League is a game of... I kind of describe it like the ocean, where it's like ebbs and flows and waves, waves of progression, all that stuff. And I feel like v, V1 right now is on a tsunami. And they're just... The tsunami is building, much like Falcons and Moist, and it's like... I feel like it's going to be, especially with Wild Card Week, a lot of people might think, you know, that they're nervous going into this. I think this is going to be really good warm-up for Worlds. That's because, let's face it, the teams in the Wild Card Week, boys, uh, it's not it's not like the main event, I don't it's think. Not, it's, the it's also not a walk in the park either. That Wild Card has got some it's pretty not. crazy competition. The reason I think it's not is because of the best of fives. And I've talked about this for a long time on the show. 
best of fives cause crazy results. And I'm against them at Worlds. So, Specifically Worlds. So we can obviously talk about that next indicator with the wildcard format because I think that's where we're headed. Um, yeah. There's a lot of really interesting things about wildcard. Uh, we are talking about the ability to play in front of the pavilion, in front of a thousand people, which mm -hmm. is going to be the same as early iterations of groups. So like, I do agree that the ability to play in these matches, whoever gets out of groups, may be a bit stronger going into that group stage compared to others, even though it does transition into best of sevens. Uh, the other thing is you're seeing not just three matches played like we normally do in like day zero of our LCS broadcast. Like round one is literally one day. That's it. Like they play a single match and then it's a reset going into day two. It's not like they get the momentum and everything else. Like teams are going to be able to, if they either get a win or get a loss, go back to their hotel room, do some replay analysis on their next matchup and then tackle it the next day after, you know, a 12, 15, 18 hour break. So there is some some interest to see how wildcard plays out because it is not just like a okay this team wins they hit a hot streak and then they keep going like dignitas when they went 9-0 and fall so that is that is of interest to me to see how that plays out but i i do think that the teams that come on a wild card are going to be arguably very strong going into that group stage um yeah and i'm, I, I'm a little nervous for the teams that are sitting first stage of groups but even with that said i would still take a guaranteed top 16 any day of the week like let me skip wild card because that looks those matchups like are scary. And the cool thing about Swiss in particular is like nine out of 10 times, the best teams, the ones that are supposed to make it through will like you have three lives. There's no excuse. Yeah. You have to show up when it matters. So uh, over multiple days too. So. Yeah. When you, when you have every, like one day for all of your Swiss matches, um, as long as teams are taking the advantage of looking back through, Oh, we got upset today and we're going to play so-and-so next. How do we avoid that? I don't think we'll get many weird matchups at two and two in Swiss where two good teams eliminate each other, right? I that might happen. That'd be hype once. <laughs> it would be that would be very very exciting, but I do think it's a little bit unlikely um, to see upsets, especially not in the first round because of the way they did the the draft system, which I thought was super cool. They did like the draft pick. Um, that was the first time ever for Swiss getting to pick your opponent. And I think round one will be fairly predictable and it won't be until like that one and two and two and two where we see anything crazy. Yeah, round one should definitely be... So he... this is the thing. Okay, I'm going to go on a bit of a rant a little bit with Psyonix because Psyonix and I, I gotta, have... I got to go. You have to go? <laughs> All right, oh, Lawler, okay. no, I mean, thank you for I don't want to be part. I don't want to be part of that conversation. Oh, you know oh, how that oh. goes. <laughs> no, this is in jest. Um, so I, I talked to Sonics a, a while ago about doing a format where the players pick who they match up against because I thought that it would be really interesting for talk shows, first touch, etc. And this was a while ago. And then I found out that the Worlds was going to have that format. And I was like, oh, shice, you sly boy. Really good format. I love the way they're doing it. I think it's really cool that all these teams get to pick who they're playing in the first round. That is awesome. So we take a look at the bracket. We have version one. They picked Orlando Pirates first. Yeah, why wouldn't course, you, right? Yeah, of course. The Africa team, little experience, yoinked them out. Um, and Orlando, I've been seeing them in ranked. And uh, they're looking pretty good out there. So I haven't gotten to play them yet. You haven't? Okay. I, I, only, like I, only ran into, I ran into Kami <laughs> and Fever in a threes game. And it was the most oh, yeah. ranked threes match of all time. And they were probably like, why are, I hate NA servers. Take me back to OCE. It was so weird. <laughs> Yeah, the Pirates team, they look good and right, so V1, so I'm going to be a walkover. I, I do think that if any of these teams who picked, apart from, um, I believe in the middle there, um, Pioneers did not get to pick their matchup first. They kind of just were got the one that was left. But, like, of the top four teams, which is version one, um, Optic, KCP, uh, Carmine, oh, sorry, top four at UNA, if they lose in these, or top three UNA, if they lose in these first round matchups, I think that's like a, a huge question mark as to, you know, did they make the pick right? Did they pick the right matchup? What were the reasons that went into uh, picking a team? And I don't know, you guys, what, were, what would the factors be for you picking well, a team I've, other than just experience? Because that seems like what went off on this. Yeah, I've, I've talked to both V1 and Renegades and a couple of the others about their decisions that go into it. Uh, version 1 primarily kind of looked at the most recent results. And Orlando Pirates in the past regional, they won regional 1. 
in spring, but took second in regional two and three. So most recently, uh, Orlando Pirates did have lesser results, even though they're the overall number one seed versus Bravado. Uh, as for gotcha. Renegades, Renegades went for the historical evidence, and Orlando Pirates is has won six out of nine regionals, while Bravado has only won three. So Renegades' position on it was, let's look long-term, while V1 is like, let's look at the right now. And right. lately, Bravado has been performing better, uh, but the reason for SSA primarily is just, you know, there is literally zero international experience outside of Gamers 8. You've never played an RLCS on land before. We're going to pick you and we're going to exploit that. Um, and yeah. a lot of teams just want to get that quick 1-0 because every single day is a new match. It's a new experience, stuff like that. Um, for Space Station, historically, they do very well against South America. Um, yeah, they do. confident after the Team Secret match. And Club is one step behind that, even though KV, one of the boys, are absolutely cracked. Shout out to Stromach and the rest of them. But... Um, Space Station was pretty confident in that pick. The one I was surprised by is, is K Corp picking 0 1. I have no idea why they picked that. Yeah, that, yeah, that was no, uh, hard. Kansas yeah. City Pioneers picking Veloce. That's the one that I was like, I think they might have leaned into the, like, the potential visa issue that was going to happen, but KC Pioneers versus Veloce, that is going to be a spike. I was going to ask Cam about that one. Because Cam is a, a fellow yeah, well, pioneer. I am Dude. a pioneer, but they, I'm, not, I'm not in these, these talks on these picks. Um, I, just, I just talk about it. But. I mean, the meter region, I think, has a lot more depth than, obviously, the, the players realize this, but fans may not realize that I don't know if, if you have to pick a MENA team between O1 and Veloce, like, who, who do you pick? Who, who are you more confident about, especially if you've never played them before? Um, yeah, it, I think the idea is difficult. to just not get a Middle East team. Uh, yeah, if you can like, help Carmine it. Because Carmine picked, right? Yeah. Uh, they were the team that picked, so I, I believe they picked fifth. It was V1, then Renegades, then... Fifth, yeah. I, I, yeah, I can tell you in order. Hold on. Yeah, so uh, Carmine ended up picking, I believe... Uh, we'll find that out in a second, but anyways... O O1 was at Gamers 8 along with Carmine, correct? Yeah. yeah so yeah. Had six, maybe maybe Carmine there? realized 18? from scrims in Gamers 8 that they're, they like well, the matchup. That could be a factor, yeah. Sure. Potentially. I could see that. I could I'm, see surprised, that. I'm surprised Semper went as low as they did. I didn't. I was. I thought Simper was gonna get picked a lot sooner. Um, that's just the power of EU. You know, it's a major region. You still don't want to pick them. Yeah. So. Well, I, I know. I, I know there was conversation of Space Station picking Optic, but they couldn't. Oh, they weren't allowed to. They were yeah, trying you, to pick Optic. Ooh. They, well, you want to. <laughs> like same thing with V1. If I'm V1, I pick Optic as well. Like historically, you guys have absolutely smacked them and have like a full read on their playstyle. So. Um, yeah, a familiar they, matchup. That'd be yeah. a good. But they they wouldn't reason. allow uh in original stuff. So it was one of the rules. Can't pick yeah, the so, same uh, region. No. I I just thought you know the format was something that was interesting. We should touch on mainly because I I'm interested to see how it plays out. Same. Um, and yeah. I think that it should be incorporated more because I like the idea of reasonings as to why you pick your first round matchup and giving that big of an advantage to the teams that are already there. You know, um, like maybe doing this for regionals and stuff like that, I think would be really fun for talking points during the week. I think the fire format's shots. cool. Yeah, and it fire shots subtly, which is nice. <laughs> yeah, the draft pick nice. stuff is, is very similar to like regular sports and broadcasting, you know, as well. I think it, it's a good draw for people that may not be used to esports when they start seeing draft picks and other things. <clears throat> Yeah, so I think that uh, the format heading into it would be interesting to watch, see how those first round matchups play out, and affect the rest of the Swiss. Um, and just to remind you guys, if you have any opinions on this, feel free to call into the Discord, um, exclamation point disc in the chat. Uh, you can join our Discord and, you know, call in with a question or opinion for Milo or Kenobi and share it on there. Um, moving on, though, we're going to talk right right now. Shooter pass, Lala, is... Um, Fun segment. Uh, another segment here, and Lawler, I don't know if you had a prior engagement that you needed to go to, or... Um, we can get through you know, Shooter Pass. We, we can have get through our Shooter Pass, pass and I gotta go. All right. No. So we got yeah, we'll our Shooter Pass segment. It. This is a rapid-fire format, um, where, you know, you try to keep your answer under 30 seconds, and you just we just rip them out real quick. Um, so, Crow, I'm going to ask the first one from my section. Um, is SSG Shooter Pass? Is SSG the most underrated team heading into Worlds right now? Mm, pass. Definitely pass. pass. Any reasoning? They're just they're 
I think they're they're very rated. They they were so close. There 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 are plenty of other teams that are far more underrated than them. All right, Waller. Pass. I I think anybody who actually knows Rocket League understands how good they are. You're talking they're one goal away from top three, one goal away from top four. Like everybody should know. And the two teams they lost to were both in the grand final. Like yeah, they're good. Everyone that knows was. That. That was the reason I had them as shoot. I think they are underrated. I think people aren't paying attention to how close their results are. I think that even though like they're in this wild card, a few different games go their way, and they could easily have been in the main event. Um, I think that people are sleeping on them. I hear a lot about FaZe. I hear a lot about NRG, BDS, all that stuff. I think Space Station and V1. I think Space Station is playing it cool, a little under the radar, and uh, that could benefit them a lot. Just another um, one, Shadow Karma. Wrong chatter in your in your timeline. <laughs> gotta, gotta remove those followers. Get rid of them. You don't want to listen to them. <laughs> All right, second shooter pass, and then I'll let Cam pick one. Uh, OCE will not make it out of wild card week. Shoot or pass. Offer it to you, Lawler. Pass. Kansas City Pioneers is definitely making it. Yes, my Let's man. Go! My man. I was like, that's there's a, no way to shoot team. on that. That's a dang good team. They are. Cam, obviously. You got uh, the yeah. sign in the background, so. <laughs> yeah, I, I would literally have to take my sign down if I said shoot on this one. I <laughs> Pioneers are, are I'm super convinced will make it out of Swiss, and Renegades definitely can too. I wouldn't be surprised to see both OC teams making it out of Swiss. I expect like Renegades in a two-two spicy match against like Sam or something like that, clutch it or something. Yeah, I, I think I, I think I agree. I think Renegades will make that round five, and I think Pioneers will be in before that for sure. I think they're a very underrated team. All right, Cam, I'll leave you some of your questions. Yeah, so with all the spicy matches, I and with Worlds finally being back, I think viewership's going to be crazy. Um, so I wanted to ask you guys to shoot or pass on if the RLCS broadcast will peak at over 400,000 viewers on Twitch. Ooh, 400,000. Yeah, uh, big number. That's, a, that's an interesting number. So what did Season 3 hit, what, 250-ish? And it hasn't gone up since then? I, don't, I, I think, think we're trying to break the 300k barrier. Yeah, I'm gonna time. say pass. I, I think I think they'll get over 200, maybe over 300. If it goes over 300, I would be surprised if it stayed for a while. Well, it depends on how many view bots were happening. Um, <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot of people trying to get those rewards. That's all I'm saying. Exclamation um, mark drop. Oh yeah, there's that's true. like you can you can go back and look at previous world championships and like right before like key moments, there's an immediate like identical like. 20k bump 10k bump in like viewership like instantaneously at certain times so yeah um i would i would have to say it's gonna be tough because like you're talking a 10-day event that's a lot of rocket league i don't know how many people are gonna want to like see that low leveling but maybe there's gonna be a steady ramp up just because it's on literally yeah. all week so build up to the final all day every day yeah <laughs> 400k would be nice but i'll probably go pass 400k is a lot fair enough um, I was gonna ask a question about Optic, but I feel like I feel like the answer is already already obvious. It was gonna be is Optic gonna play Turbo for at least one series, and I think it's it's pretty much determined. It's a hard pass. He's not even in their scrims right now. If he's in, <laughs> if he's back home, so yeah, we'll just skip that. Feels bad, man. <laughs> uh, yeah, you can go Karma if you want. All right, um, Shooter Pass Asia and or Africa regions will get their first series wins this week in Wild Card. Yeah, I'll, I'll go with shoot, mainly because in Swiss, odds are they'll play each other. They have to get a win, you know? That'd be interesting. Yeah. Yeah, uh, definitely shoot. It literally has to happen. Uh, one All right, of them the format is giving you guys an out. What a bad <laughs> question, Karma. Oh, man. I think it's second round That's I have. That's on me, like, chat. That's on me. Gladiators playing somebody or something like that. So I think it's literally my second round if things happen the way they do. There's a chance that it could happen, like, literally day two, so... Yeah, I want to see one of those teams claw that. back at, at two and two. You know, they, they start O two, they and then they they, they play great. some warm up games, build a little bit of momentum throughout the day, go two and two, and they have a shot at qualifying. I'll be so sick. I love that. All right, my last shooter pass question is: booing and smack booing and smack talk is part of the competitive events, helps the scene, and I expect to see it at the World Championship. Shoot or pass. Corey, you can go first on this one. Uh, yeah, of course I get to go first on this one. Um... <laughs> I am going to say shoot, mainly because it's been very entertaining as a viewer to watch V1. Um, I'm curious whether or not all of the 
the, the crowd reaction to V1 if they continue to, you know, lean into a little bit of the, the trash talk here and there and be really personable Please. and exciting. The EU crowd didn't like it. <laughs> they, were, they were booing occasionally. Um, but I wonder if the NA crowd is going to support it and really, really get involved and get into it. Um, I think it's part of being competitive. You can't just lie down and let people walk all over you. You got to project confidence. So I think it's important. Yeah, I have to go shoot as well. Um, I think the only thing that needs to be improved, because it's not just Calm doing the trash talk. Like, Joyo does it a lot too. He just does it better. No offense to Calm. Like, 18-year-old banter is not that great, especially when it's from North America. So hopefully he, like, gets better at it and learns into, like, do facetious and sarcasm. And be like, man, great shot. You almost hit that one. You know, is a lot better than you effing suck. Like, <laughs> yeah. different, different types of banter, my guy. So... I think he'll get better with it, and a couple others will lean into it. And uh, the NA crowd, I think, is a lot more uh, willing to get behind that because they do want to see only their team win rather than be a, a proud fan of Rocket League as a collective. Uh, the only yeah. time they do that is after their team gets eliminated. So, um, yeah, I think I think it'll definitely happen, and it's it's good. I mean, it's good to see some rivalries, and you know, anytime you see V1 and and Moist play each other, people are more invested in it. Same thing as like after Reddles was spitting his game against BDS. Like, you want to see those two teams play. So, I think it gets people more invested. Great. I'm about it. Yeah, I shoot this one. Um, I'm from Boston. It's pretty much all that, <laughs> that needs to be said there. Fair enough. <laughs> yeah. The last two, Cam, you got the last two floors. I, I do only want to ask one more because my other one was also very related to trash talk and what players okay. say to each other on the stage. But this last one, I think, is probably the most important one for me. It's... Shooter pass, teams that qualify for the World Championship should automatically get an in-game decal. Hmm. Um, I'm going to shoot on this one um, because I think that, you know, uh, if you're invited to the main event, that means that you've been a staple team. Or uh, whether or not it's the organization it, it, or the players, a staple, consistent being throughout the whole season and you're invited to invited to land, you know you have to play in the wild card. I think if you've provided that much of a platform for RLCS throughout the time, yeah, I think a decal should be included in that. So I, I talked about this. I'm going to take more than 30 on this one. Long time ago, um, when esports decals were announced, I presented the idea that when world championships come around, that there should be packages. Like, there is no reason I shouldn't be able to buy a discount pack of all NA teams or all EU teams or all OCE teams. That's uh, true. Which, which would allow you to buy more things, especially now that there's, like, goal explosions and everything else. Uh, and like Karma was saying, like, if you are making it to the World Championship, that means you're a consistent contender over the course of 10 months. So the fact that they're not in is a problem. Luckily, we're getting new decals in October, so that'll be cool. But... Um, Primarily, I, I do think that there is ways, and like I think there should be unique decals for the world champions. Whoever wins Absolutely. the world champion should get a unique decal that is exclusive time for like maybe like a month or something like that. But they should be doing like bundles, like the NA bundle, the EU bundle, where you can buy a bunch of decals for a cheaper price. So yeah, you maybe you spend 30, 40 bucks, but you get I would all the clap decals. If I could right now. You know, like just doing stuff like that, or like special <laughs> product codes, or you know, during the world championship by watching the world championship they will display at some point a code that you can use in store and give you a unique RLCS World Championship 2021-2022 decal. That Absolutely. way it yeah, more viewers promotion, to come in. interaction. Like Valorant did that, right? But For their majors? League of Legends does it. Like, there's yeah, a bunch. I'll, it's easy. You just steal it. <laughs> yeah, there's a, there's a lot of cool things that they could be doing, but yeah, uh, definitely definitely shoot on this one. Like, There's a lot of things that they could do uh, surrounding the World Championship, but... Uh, we obviously all know the limitations when it comes to like updates on consoles and everything else. Like you can only schedule them so many times a year, and there's definitely limitations. But uh, people should be excited going into next season. There's some pretty cool stuff coming. Yeah, just That's a reminder. So I don't get in trouble. Mm -hmm. Just a reminder again, guys. If you have an opinion on this, you feel free to join the Discord, call into our program, give us your opinion. We'd love to hear. Um, yeah, I mean, I think that there's a lot of opportunity for Sonics. I think. They're probably mainly just focused right now on getting this giant world production, which is like their first um, fully fledged world's event um, as a company now with that big behind them. Maybe, you know, just focusing on that for now, making sure that goes well, and then implementing all the other stuff as time goes on. Um, obviously, they definitely have things that they could improve on, and I, I'm sure that they're aware. And um I'm just really excited, Lawler. Before we let you go, any any final thoughts? You want to shout yourself out? Um, and are you going to Worlds? Are you be there? 
Um, I will be there if and only if V1 makes it out of group. So if you guys want to all be biased to see me at LAN, uh, just make sure V1 <laughs> makes it out of wildcard, and then we're good to go. Um, no, uh, as always, if you guys want to support me, go to twitch.tv forward slash karma, K-A-R-M-A-A-H, on all <laughs> socials. A uh, really easy way to show love to me and me specifically is by doing that. But no, uh, Cam, Karma, always a pleasure talking. Glad, uh, thanks for bringing me on as a special guest, but I'll let yeah, you guys go back to doing... Uh, Doing your craziness of whatever long shots is. I don't. It sounds cool. <laughs> that's we're we're going to talk about is. some dark horses uh, without you, Lawler. But we appreciate you coming in, taking the time out of your day to spend it with us. We appreciate it a lot. And we'll look forward to having you back. Anytime, Lawler, you want to call into the show, feel free. We'd love to hear from you. And, that's, uh, that's not how you spell it. Don't look at that. Don't ignore that. Ignore <laughs> that. What yeah, uh, definitely don't go follow Lawler on Twitter. He's does a lot of great things and uh keep up with him on the on the twitters at lawler tv check him out um but yeah lawler shout out again thanks for having us i look forward to talking to you soon but we're gonna go ahead and uh say goodbye let's shoot over to just me and cam for now so finally thanks again lawler hope you have a nice night yeah we love and, lawler uh, it's just you and i now cam shooting it down Heading down towards the end of our show, and we're going to start to talk about long shots, Cam, for this upcoming wildcard week. Um, kind of worlds in general, because I feel like the worlds format is a more forgiving than the previous formats we've had for the majors, how, yeah, which like, leaves like more room for the upsets, right? There's like three like checkpoints, kind of. This is the way I see it. You, you, you qualify to Swiss. You don't have to be amazing. You just got to get top eight. And that's like your first checkpoint. And then you go to the, the group stage. And if you can make it out of bracket, you get another checkpoint. And you get to go to the single uh, bracket where then, then there's no second chances, nothing like that. But <laughs> right. I, I think this format really does benefit the, the higher seeded teams, the top teams, the expected mm -hmm. great teams, because they don't get the opportunity to lose a match and then tilt out of the tournament because they have to keep playing. It's like <laughs> right. win one game or lose one game, you go back to the player hotel. You, you take a breather, you go go swim in the pool, go to the gym, whatever, however you want to take your stress out, and you get so much time with your coach to figure things out. So I would be surprised if top teams absolutely crumbled at this event, but there are a couple lower-seeded teams that, hmm. that do have a shot. They, hmm. they, they, they're going to take some shots at the king. Uh, Chad, if you guys want to uh, join Discord again, Give us your opinion. I see we got Darren X in there. He always calls in. Love Darren X, so we'll get him on shortly. Um, if you want to join in as well, we'd love to hear from you, so do that. Um, as far as format, Cam, you said teams get time after a loss. Is that right? Um, at least for Swiss, there's only oh, like okay. one match played per round per day. I believe oh, at least on some of the days. So you only have to play one game. So it's, you know, win or lose, you're going to be taking an entire day off after that. Oh, that's sick. So you, that, none of that, like, lose, be pissed, till, like you said, go and lose again. That's nice. That's a huge factor. Um, so, yeah, I, one big thing for me is the best of fives, which I've touched on a bit in the show. I've touched on in previous shows. I don't, as a competitor, I don't like best of fives. As a viewer, it's great because it causes tons of upsets. Typically, best of fives are very swingy. Um, it's easy to swing momentum and it's easy to just sweep as well, um, which is why the best of five format to me is frustrating, um, especially at Worlds because you've played like such a long season to finally get to Worlds and you've been put in the best of five. However, I will say the Swiss five, best of five format is the best best of five format you could have. I, I think I, I agree with that yeah because in game fives or in best of fives game one can you can feel like you've already lost the series or that you are, you're yeah. under so much pressure after losing game one and at least with swiss you know that you're gonna get three shots at this exactly like when you lose game one and two in a best of five you're screwed 95 percent of the time right and like my team splice we worked for years to get an opportunity to play six best of fives in rlcs like years for six best of fives and uh I, and i think that like i mean i could talk about the old format but i'm not gonna uh, the current format i think that this version of best of fives is great and i think a lot of upsets are potential and, and one of the teams that i think could start making some noise 
is, um, I believe it's the 01 esports roster with um, Mason, AMS, and Zezonix on it. I believe they're out of the Middle East. Um, yeah, watching I'm not that game sure. was, it was really a treat. I'm not sure. Kim, do you know if they were the second or the third Middle Eastern seed? I believe they are the third seed, I I think. I think so, too. I think they're behind Veloce. Yeah, I, th I think uh, Veloce were, were doing very, very well. Yeah, so I, I think they're behind Veloce, and I think they are a team. Any Middle Eastern team's a threat in this format to me, because the the minor regions that are seeded low are typically the threats to me. So for me, that 01 Esports, I think Mason is really, really good player. AMS has been around for a while. I've played against them a bunch when I've visited Europe a few times and played Rock League in there. They're always duo queuing together. And I have a huge feeling about teams that always play together. Much why I rate the Falcons so highly is because they're always playing together and they've played together for such a long time. I feel like Middle Eastern teams have that longevity of rosters. Because of not being allowed into the scene up until recently, they've had these teams for a while that have just been practicing. And I, I think they can make some noise. Their first round matchup is, though, against Carmine. Yeah, so. it's, it's, a, it's a tough round one, but I honestly... I'm with you. I wouldn't be surprised if they ended up going on a bit of a tear. Um, they're going to get a lot of time to practice and get comfortable. And the MENA region as a whole has quite a lot of depth, I think. I mean, there's even a team in MENA that didn't qualify for this event because they were such a new roster. But mm -hmm. they were absolutely dominating the one regional that they got to play in. So right. MENA are, are, are super talented. Um, for my long shot, though, I'm looking at a different region, Ooh, and okay. and I know what people are going to say. Is it a region say, that's behind you on the sign? Um, it could potentially <laughs> be the region that has the Kansas City Pioneers on it. Oh, and okay, okay. this is definitely not my bias coming out, but I got the pleasure of watching KCP's scrims over the past few days, and I got to cast one of them. And they, I believe the matches I watched were against NRG and against G2, and KCP when they are they they are on when they when they're playing at their best they look good I mean they are they do. absolutely unstoppable so I, I think everyone in Swiss should watch out uh, I agree that they pass the eye test when you just watch OCE play no offense to Renegades Pioneers I think are a step up uh, I, I like the invigoration of Scrub I think that he is like a game changer for the Oceanic region. Um, I, I think that their performance over the past few events is building enough momentum to the point where they finally get in here and they can cause some teams to choke. Um, because they can apply like that nervous energy to a team and cause an upset. They have the mechanical ability, right? Absolutely. I mean, you know, you, you might be a higher seeded team and think, oh, we're the favorites, we should win this. And then they go out and get slapped in game one and all those expectations can kind of crush you and your own expectations your fans expectations playing on the big stage um i wonder what kind of nerves will happen to certain players just because it's worlds it's it's probably going to feel bigger than a major to some people and a lot of these teams have never been to an event before and the one event they get to go to because of all the extra wild card spots that opened up is uh, the world championship like teams mm -hmm. like you know, the extra Mina slot that got unlocked, the extra Sam slot that got unlocked. Um, exactly. Th these, these people have never played in a land this big ever in their life, and they either need to be lights out or they're going to just crumble. Pioneers also have uh, my favorite RLCS name ever, Banana Head, on their team. So any, any team that has Banana Head... Uh, as a player, I think I have to cheer for. I mean, that's just like you just like when, when the casters have to scream his name when he scores. Yeah, imagine crazy. if Banana Head scored the goal instead of Justin. Like, just yeah. think about that for a second. Banana. Banana this Head. Is <laughs> <laughs> I just think it would be it would be so so funny. Uh, it's one of those names that just makes me laugh in game. Um, and I think that they have huge upset potential, and like going the other direction as for and. Like, we've been talking about Dark Horses. I'm going to say long shot the other direction is that Dignitas don't even make it out of this wildcard format. Who is, like, arguably one of the most talented teams in Europe for me is Dignitas. Individually, I love all of them. I would love to, like, you know, 
coach that team. I'd love to, like, be involved with that team. I'm a huge fan of them, all three. It's just something's not adding up right now, Cam, and I think that Dignitas not making it out of this stage would not be a surprise to me, given what seems like the turmoil going on surrounding that. Yeah, I, I don't even know, like, what's necessarily going on, because individually, I think they've been looking very good. All the Dignitas' players, like, ours, are looking good right now. Um, I've seen Jack and Joria specifically do a lot of, like, Johnny Boy 1v1 show matches lately. They've been mm -hmm. looking really good. Um, and they're so talented, they should do well, but I wonder if this is the one team in the format where it, it punishes them, where they need to be building this momentum to feel good, and they exactly. can never build the momentum because they keep having to take a break and play the next day. The, mm -hmm. the format asks them to stay consistent, stay level-headed, and just take it one day at a time, and I feel like if they get off to a bad start, it's it's they're just going to slowly build like momentum the wrong way because they don't get to like just keep playing and get everything out there yeah exactly uh, it's just it just seems like they are not consistent they are sporadic the movements are not coordinated and i think gamers 8 actually hurt them a lot more than it helped them um because of the lack of performance there and um Jorius did look good in 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 the 1v1s this week though so there's some hope Definitely. there, and the big complaint from my Twitch chat when we talked about because I watched the Dig replays, Cam, like on stream, I was like, what is going on with this team? They're like one of my, they're my favorite European team. One of my favorites in the world. And it just seemed like Scrub is forced to kind of drive around on pads, and he tries to force plays as third man, spe specifically against the Middle Eastern team. I was watching them play 0-1. So... Scrub would come forward and try and make plays on low boost when a ball was not even in a position to be made a play on. And, I, and um, I'd see similar situations from each of them, Joria's and Jack, and it just seemed like the comms were either not there, or the coordination was not there, you know, like the, the basic foundations of synergy were just not there for that team. And I just, I'm worried about them because I love them so much. I want them to do well. That uh, Dig is just going to struggle. Yeah. Um, well. Do you have a team, Cam, that you wanted to touch on and talk about uh, maybe as like a worry to make it through? Um, no, it's really, it's really you only think it's gonna be that I'm worried of... about. Yeah, I'm kind oh, of okay. on that. So I stole That's... your thunder a little bit. I mean, it's, it's, it's on everybody's mind, I feel like, you know? Mm -hmm. So we got a caller on the line, Darren X, our Swedish guy. We're going to bring him in. Uh, Darren X, how you doing? Hello, hello. How's Welcome Sweden back. this week? Sweden. Any changes? Uh, are, we, are you still burning up like the rest of us? <laughs> actually, actually, no. Pretty cool at the moment. I don't know what, what the degrees are in Fahrenheit, but it's currently 16 degrees Celsius. Oh, nice. So it's fairly cool, nice. I would say. Uh, much cooler than you guys, I think. <laughs> yeah, 60 bad. Fahrenheit for all the NA people out there. That's a dream, currently. Yeah, uh, absolutely. And, uh, yeah, the, the I, heat has been uh, almost unbearable some, from time to time, so so it's nice to appreciate been, school at times. It's been insane. There have been, like, literally birds falling out of the sky. Jesus. <laughs> around me. That's so, so terrifying. Uh, <laughs> it, it's terrifying. Yeah. But glad to hear you're staying cool. What, what question you got for us this week? It's always nice to hear from you. So this is more of, a, uh, of an opinion this time, if you don't mind. Oh, okay. All What's right. your opinion? I think that this... Uh, Worlds event might be one of the most, if not the best LAN event that we're ever going to have in a long time. Uh, what's your reasoning for that? Mainly due to the fact that uh, not only because of uh, the high, high stakes that every team has to has to basically perform the utmost to the utmost efficiency. Uh, not only that, but to, but due to the fact that we didn't have a a Worlds event uh, last time when the RLCSX mm -hmm. was a thing due, due to COVID. Uh, so this is a very anticipated event, and I think that due to the fact that there's so many teams, so, so many teams that mm -hmm. I can do so well and do so bad at the same time that it can go <laughs> at the... It, it's literally anyone's game at this point that we have. Uh, yeah. And I also think that if not for EU and NA, I think that this might be the year of, of uh, Sam slash Mina. And that, that in itself is just Ooh, so okay. exciting to hear about, because they have done a lot of good stuff, and I think that they were gonna they're gonna bring it this year. 
So who do you have winning, Darren X, out of this wild card format? Do you have all the all the major regions making it out, or do you think there'll be some upsets? Uh, I absolutely think we're going to have some upsets. I think that. Uh, I think that Optic, on, I, I love Turbo as much as I do, but I cannot for the life <laughs> of me think that, that uh, it, it, worst case scenario, I think they're going to fall out. And I think that, some, uh, yeah, uh, it's some of the due to the inconsistencies there. I don't know. What about uh, Dig, Darren X? Do you think they'll make it out? Dignus has... I mean, yeah, that's your team. I do. I love the team, really. Like, I, I know I have a dream match that I want to see Dignitas vs. Energy due to the uh, history Ooh. that they've had. I really, yeah, really want to see it. But so for that to happen, though, they have to make it out of wildcard. They really have to. Yeah, uh, my hopes are not that high, to be fair. But they are. They are yeah. there. They're not. They're not doomed, whatsoever. But they they have the chance. But they have to clutch it. I think at this point. Because there are so many right, teams so, that are good. So you got them making it up. They might, they might do well. I think K, uh, KC might, uh, might take it up, or they'll uh, come out on top. And I think V1 is gonna absolutely go through the wildcard session without question. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I awesome. mean, all these, all these storylines are what are gonna make you know the tournament so amazing. Yeah, like, for sure. There are so many teams we've been waiting so long. This is like. 10 months of culmination to this world championship and obviously people's expectations are incredibly high but with all the storylines all the incredible matches we've had yeah I, I i agree with you i think it will deliver even though expectations are through the roof right now definitely yeah there's so much at stake there's so much to so much to look at basically like you don't want to miss a match i feel like at this point yeah i, I agree uh Darius. I, I think that this world's needs to be the best that there has ever been for Rocket League because not only did you mention and I'm gonna let you go there next appreciate you being here no sure um, no problem hope you have a great night you too um, thank you I just I think that for Rocket League this needs to be the best event we've ever had yeah. there has been no worlds for how long now Cam two years year and a half plus it feels like, like 10 that. years I don't yeah, know anymore it feels like forever we haven't crowned a world champion there used to be two of them then now the formats change. It's been a whole year long thing. Then we saw the production with the Winter Major after a long break. Fantastic. My favorite visual event Rock League's ever put on. Then we transition back to the Copper Box in London. Historic RLCS event. Bam. Killed it. Great storylines. Moist. Joyo captured the hearts of everybody in the Rock League scene. It felt like mine mm -hmm. included. Then after all that, we have all this conversation about Worlds. First touch, building up all year. And now we have it in Texas. People have been asking for a Texas land for how long? Yeah, for ever. I yeah, feel people, like. so people now, were excited that the last venue was going to be in Texas. And then it, when it got mm -hmm. canceled, it, it just it was like a knife through the heart to everybody. But it's back. The, the redemption Yay. of our land is here. <laughs> I wanted to get a giant 10-gallon hat and walk around the stadium all weekend. One of so Cam, I hats, might have to yeah. since I can't go, I might have to just send you the ten gallon hat. Hey, you if, walk around with it all weekend. <laughs> you know, if 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 one shows up at, at my door, um, I'll wear it for at least a day. You know. <laughs> all right. But I mean, I think this this has to be this is Rocket League's marquee event for the year, and I think from what I understand, it seems like they've been building up to show everybody like we've changed, our production has changed, our ability to put on an event has changed. And they've shown that with the last two events. And I think this Worlds has to be the best. For the scene, for the industry, for to be taken seriously as a Tier 1 eSport, you're putting on 10 days of championship games. You're investing that much into, you know, the event. And it just, it seems like Rocket League's coming out party this year. Maybe I'm wrong, but I just feel like this needs to be a big event for Rocket League in general. And Cam, it seems like you agree. And I think it will be. Long long answer short, I think it will be. I think it's going to be, you guys are going to have an amazing time in Dallas. I think it's going to be loud. I think it's going to be packed. Um, I think the venue from the outside, they don't release anything from the inside, but it looks amazing. It looks spacious. I know they're going to have security on point. I think all things are pointing up for the world's production this year. Yeah, it's it's just 
Oh, I, it's so exciting. It really is. And there, there are going to be so many eyes on Rocket League from other esports viewers and other esports organizers. Um, I really want this event to prove to the world that Rocket League is a tier one esport, is a staple esport, and that it could, just because of people watching this event, it could double in size. Because I, I genuinely think Rocket League could still do that. It could double or triple in size as a game as an esport, as a production, and as entertainment. Sure. There's, there's so many possibilities for it. And I want all of that to be realized, you know, in the next two weeks. Yeah, and, and um, we're gonna we're gonna take a caller who's who's maybe going to Worlds and we're gonna check in with Boots here. Boots, are you there? Yeah. How you doing, bro? Uh, are you going to Worlds? Yes. Oh, awesome. okay. Where are you from? Uh, I am from Michigan. Ah, Michigan. My coach is from Michigan. You oh, know nice. Jimmer? Jimmer's, uh, I don't know him personally, obviously, but I have heard of him, yes. He, he's somewhere up there, <laughs> way north. I think he's near Canada or something. But, uh, I've been to Michigan briefly. I loved it a lot. So Yeah, it's not too bad. Boots, what's your question for us? So speaking of how big worlds and stuff is, do you think they underestimated the amount of people that wanted to attend? And do you think they should have mm. bigger? Oh, yeah. really? You think bigger? Oh, oh yes. wow, you I, both I think, think they should have. Yeah, because tickets Ooh. sold out so fast. It, it was a madhouse. Yeah, day one was crazy. That's true. <laughs> but what what happens if you guys go there and it's not filled? I wouldn't care, personally. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I understand the optics. You don't want it to look like it's a dead arena, but it's going to be packed. I mean, if the amount of people that are That's going an interesting point. with the tickets that people bought, it's going to be completely full. Because I just looked and there's only like 20 tickets left. <laughs> It's crazy. Yeah, I remember when they sold them, a lot of people struggled to even get them. And then as the event gets closer, I felt like I saw people selling them. Yeah. Um, maybe because of, like, me, like, last-second realization that you're unable to attend, which is awful. Um, yeah, I, I think... Hmm. I was thinking they should maybe go less, but it's kind of hard to answer until I see the event, because... For a long time, I feel like Rocket League events... Did we see how the Copper Box did on stream boots up? Like, I felt like the Copper Box felt like it was filled. Yeah, no? it, yeah. based on stream, it looked like it was packed. Yeah, yeah. I think maybe because it's their first Worlds, they're kind of just picking, you know, Cam, like a neutral number. Like Yeah, yeah they may, they may not be trying to scale up too quickly, but I, I'm of the belief that if you... You sell out a 5,000 stadium, and then you try a 10,000 stadium, and you sell that one out. Just keep going. Mm -hmm. until, oh, that's true. <laughs> until you find something that, like, okay, we can't sell a 35K stadium, but we can sell it a 28K stadium. Okay. Yeah. Like, so we'll do, like, 30K usually, unless we are seeing preliminary data that says there's going to be massive demand. I just think Sonics and Epic can afford to be more confident in the attendance of their fans, especially now that lands are consistently back. And I, I expect next season for these venues to get bigger. Hopefully. Yeah, I think. <laughs> yeah, I, I think that's a great point. Um, Boots, who do you who who are you cheering for right now? Uh, NA and EU, or you just have one? Honestly, like I don't really have a particular team. Like I, I like Cloud Nine at the time, <laughs> and oh yeah. And I, I, I like for other esports and stuff. I'm a TSM fan, so that didn't work out either. Oh, so right. you're, you're running out of orgs. Yeah, I'm running, I'm running out of <laughs> orgs. So I'm just I just like watching Rocket League. So. I'm just hyped for to be there. It's the fan of the game. Yeah. You think there'll be um some cool chants and stuff like in Hopefully. Europe? Hopefully. Yeah. Or... Yeah. After watching Are you a Copper cheerer? Box, I mean, I will. I, I, I'm not really, but I will. <laughs> if there's some so cool one thing ones. I was, one thing I want to ask you, Boots, I was reading on the Rock League Esports Reddit this week about someone who posted about feeling the need to chant or like this pressure to be loud. Um, is that something you feel as a fan attending the event? Like... Do you feel like you have to participate in the cheers and the crowd, or do you feel comfortable just going, sitting there, and enjoying watching the Scoot Rock? I mean, it could go both ways. I mean, obviously, like, I would want everyone to chant because, like, it just, it's more hype, you know? <laughs> <laughs> it's just yeah. way more hype. it just be a cooler experience. But, I mean, I guarantee after probably day one, day two on the final day, I'll, for the first couple of games, I'll probably just be chilling. But <laughs> Save the energy. Yeah, save the energy. <laughs> Yeah, it's a long event. Yeah. And are you going to groups and worlds boots or just worlds? No, nah, I'm just going to the uh, weekend. Or I mean, main event. I'm yeah, sorry. yeah, I'll just be there the main event, the final three days. Oh, okay, cool. 
Uh, who do you got winning, Boots, before I let you go? Uh, that's a tough question. I, I mean, honestly, I think Moist will probably take it, to be honest. They're just playing so well. Yeah. Yeah, I can yeah see that's that. a good Fair pick. Enough. That's a good pick. All right, Boots, thanks for calling in. Yeah, thank you. Um, join us again next time. It was awesome having you. Hope you have a great day, homie. Yeah, thanks. You guys too. All right, Boots, calling in. Awesome. You know what? I, I love everybody who calls in. I just want to say thanks, guys. It's like it's like my favorite part of the show. No offense to everyone else involved, but but when the callers hop in this girl, I think hearing hearing multiple points of view about stuff we all work on and are all a fan of is just something that I think is awesome, Cam. And so shout out yeah, to all I, the callers. I just like going off topic sometimes because then I don't have to worry about you saying that Turbo is better than Tony <laughs> for whatever reason, you know. Because I'm pretty no, sure viewer takes shooting, are better than yours. Shooting, shooting. <laughs> no, a better I'm gonna, I'm gonna twist this forever. I'm sorry. Shooter I'm still holding more. a grudge from earlier. <laughs> I mean, that's fair. I have one take, <laughs> and I'm criticized for the rest of my life. I get it. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's, it's not. Well, it's it goes not here. Right He's in his own league, exactly. See, Darrenex. I should, should have just kept you on the show, Darrenex, so that you could have helped me go in on Cam. But that's not here nor there. Uh, as we get final thoughts, Cam, as we wrap up our show. Man, what a great show today. Lawler was fantastic having yeah, him I, on it here. Was great. We got all of our new fancy graphics on today, too. I know. I Shout out to so Sleeky and today. Christine, our producers. Look at this, guys. We got the thing on the side. We can move it up and down. We got the underneath down here. We got, like, some cool stuff. Um, and it, it all looks great. We're, we're starting to, like, up the production here, which is... It's just cool. So shout out to everyone there. And Lawler did great. We love having the callers in. And I'm excited to watch this this week of Wild Card Rocket League. Um, and anything you wanted to add, Cam, before we, we head off here? Um, I mean, not really. I mean, I really did want to just talk about Optic a bit. But, I mean, I, I, got, I got my say in. Got my hashtag free turbo out. Yeah, um, just, trying to, just trying to defend OGs out here, honestly. Just trying to do yeah, that. Although seriously. Turbo can handle himself, you know, but still. That's what I thought was going to happen. And then you pounced on me with Lawler. But Torment is also... Well, OG, you, so. you know, with I that, attacked an OG. That was the mistake, is, I think. Yeah, yeah. I got, I got defensive yeah. over my boy. Um, I attacked one of our own. It yeah. was a big <laughs> issue. It was a big issue. But I, I just, I'm really excited to see the, the games. Now, now I, I just want to watch Rocket League so bad, and I have to wait a whole week. So I don't know, I don't know what to do with, my, with myself for the next six days while I wait, honestly. Yeah, it's, it's going to be great. Um, we are going to have a show following the Wildcard Weekend broadcast. So if you guys enjoyed the show, we'll be back again. The show will be back Sunday, next Sunday, following the RLCS broadcast, which is probably way later than our normal time we're typically on three or four eastern until six or seven yeah, um, I think the matches end at 5 p.m oh they do so that kind of fits into our schedule yeah, so a it, won't be, it won't be too late thankfully yeah so we'll be around the same so we'll start right when that broadcast ends um and again if you guys haven't joined our discord uh, please do uh, we'll we'll be talking throughout the week in there about worlds, um, and yeah, we'll look forward to us coming back next Sunday. I'm excited to watch a lot of the Rocket League this week, and um, will I be in per in person watch partying? That's a good question. I might be Cam though. Cam, you can answer that one for yourself. <laughs> um, we'll see. We'll see. I've I've a bit of travel to do, so yeah. Cam we'll is out. going. Um, chat, unfortunately, I had a family member who has been diagnosed with cancer, um, and I am choosing to spend time with family over the, the Rocket League uh, World Championship. Although I will be watching and paying attention and doing our show, being there in person, unfortunately, I can't. My attendance is required elsewhere. So I, um, when I can, I'll probably be doing that. However, most of the time, I'm going to be with family this week, so... Bit of, I don't want to end on a sad note, though, because everyone's healthy and everyone's doing good. Nothing super bad's happening. My, my family is fine. Um, I just, you know, family is very important to me, and so is Rocket League, but this, this current situation uh, requires my attention. So, um, yeah, we'll be back next week, and Cam is going to be doing some traveling there. So... We'll, yeah, my background we'll be might be different next time. We'll, we'll, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll see. Hopefully, it's not too scuffed. You know, I'll uh, I'll try my best to not be scuffed. 
Yeah, I we're promise. prefacing this. We're prefacing this by saying this is going to be like an on the road show. So it might be scuffed. You guys have to kind of give Sleegy and Christine a break, really. <laughs> and they they they're just you know doing doing so good right now. They they deserve a break too. I mean, exactly. I was just so so impressed with the graphics today, honestly. So big big yeah. shout out to to, to you guys, Sleegy and Christine. Yeah, everything looks awesome. And um, yeah, that's it for us for today, guys. Thanks for calling in. Thanks for tuning in for the show. Um, we appreciate it, and we look forward to an exciting week of Rocket League. Until next time, guys. Have a good Bye. one. Bye. This road, the one foot tall would lead us home. Our fates are known, but time will mend our broken bones. I've held the weight of all these years spent in the cave. These times are strange. I never thought I'd